Hello everyone and thank you for choosing to watch my Mario Galaxy review. Mario Galaxy is a 3D platformer made by Nintendo and released for the Nintendo Wii in 2007, November to be exact. Sorry modern gamers, if you want to experience this gem, you will have to go back and dust off those Wii remotes. This game doesn't have any kind of physical release outside of the Wii which is a shame as this would make for a great re-release. However, if you do want to play the game, you can get it on either the Wii U or a Chinese version of the NVIDIA Shield. Huh. Okay, so if you don't own a Wii, your best bet is to move to the Earth's closest thing to an Orson Welles novel and get an overpriced gaming tablet, which will probably kill your social credit and get you put on house arrest or something. Or buy a Wii U and go to the Wii shop, if it's still open. Anyway, this is one of the best selling games on the Wii, so you shouldn't have difficulties finding a copy. This game still goes for about 40 to 30 bucks, brand or pre-owned, but I assure you it is worth every penny. The game sees you control Mario as you journey across the galaxy to save Princess Peach from the tyrannical dinosaur Bowser. The story is the exact same in every Mario game, this one adds a twist by introducing new characters such as Rosalina and the Treasure Trackers, a group of toads that will help you along the way by giving you hints on secret areas within levels. You start the game with an invitation from Peach to come to her castle for some sexy time. But after Bowser cock blocks you, Mario decides to king hit him in the alley next to the club. Who the fuck is writing this? Jesus, that's dark. To achieve this, you have to collect the power stars. You choose which level you want to play by exploring a small spaceship and entering rooms that will let you choose levels. The main goal of each level is to collect a power star, and each level has three power stars, plus a hidden star that you can find. So you go into each level three times, exactly. I never found all of the stars in the game, but I did find enough to get to the final boss. I'm not sure how many exactly you need, but I did get to them by doing all of the levels and some of the bonus stuff, so you don't need an incredible amount. The game has lots of boss battles, they're all quite enjoyable, but it does recycle some bosses near the end of the game, and you have to fight Bowser a bunch of times. It's not the biggest issue, but I would have liked if all of the bosses were unique and if they saved the Bowser battle for the end. Or well, maybe having you just fight the uh, Koopa Kids or something. In some levels you fight Bowser Jr. instead of Bowser, so it would have been easy to bring in some more Koopa Links. I did enjoy how each level changed, or depending on which power star you were going for within the level. It means that you had to play each level three times minimum, but it doesn't feel sluggish or repetitive because the task is always different. Overall, the controls are really good for a 3D platformer. Mario can do all of the things he could do in Sunshine 64, including jump, punch, slide, power jump, and all the rest. Though at times, I did feel like the depth perception in the game was a bit wonky. I'd go to jump on a platform and just miss it entirely, which I'm fully admitting is probably my own fault. It wasn't a common experience, but it did happen enough times that I feel the need to mention it. The levels are really imaginative, especially for the time this game was released. Lots of levels consist of little planets that Mario travels to and from, and are basically just spheres that you run around and explore. I originally worried that my brain would have trouble recognizing exactly what I had to do to traverse a level as they're so intricate and many are large, but they're so well designed that I only had to look up in a guide once what to do next. I've never seen a game handle its level design quite like this, and I'm pretty sure there's been no game before that has tried it since. Or before or after. Except probably Mario Galaxy 2. <laughs> yeah, absolutely Mario Galaxy 2. Mario has some new power-ups, to be to, but to be completely honest, I never found that any were adding anything to the game, really. The B suit, and the Sting suit, and the Ice suit, all quite fun novelties that fit in the levels they're in. Sting suit. I think that should be spring suit. But they're not used in enough levels for me to have any lasting impressions about them, and to my knowledge, none were brought back for any future game. The music is a bit of a mixed bag. Not to say it's bad, but sometimes it's so epic that it just takes me out of the game. I really, really love the music, and the songs were all fantastic being recorded by a real studio orchestra by one of the greats in the business. But in some levels the gameplay will be kind of relaxed while this incredibly epic music is playing in the background and it just doesn't fit well. I had to think of an example, think of how out of place but also great Sonic R's music was. The music didn't fit the game very well and you definitely wouldn't call it Sonic music. 
but it's still really groovy and fun to listen to. That doesn't mean Mario can't feel the sunshine as it brightens up his day, Jesus Christ. The music is incredible, it's one of the only soundtracks that I'd really like to own on CD, I've, I must have been on something when I wrote this. The graphics still look really good all things considered. Mario Odyssey and Super Mario 3D World of course do look better, but for a game released in 2007, it still holds up. Not only that, it looks significantly better than other games from the same year. In my opinion, the cartoony style of the game makes it look better than realistic looking games for the time, such as Assassin's Creed and The Witcher. Not bad for a system that didn't have much more powerful graphics than the GameCube, and it really shows that when a developer wants to try, they can get some great looking graphics from the Wii. Now for a couple of negatives. There aren't many, but I do feel the need to voice my complaints. Firstly, multiplayer is a total joke. The only way to game the game multiplayer, to play the game multiplayer I should say, is to have one character control Mario and the other control a cursor that moves around the screen and collects slash shoots little star bits. It makes no sense as Luigi is not only in the main game, you rescue him from a ghost world, but also playable after you complete the game when you get 120 stars. I don't know why they didn't put in a proper multiplayer, but if you are looking for a game that's good for twins or siblings, look elsewhere. Secondly, you can only play the game with the Wii Remote and Nunchuck. This isn't a huge issue as the game does control really well and the uh, gameplay really complements the Wii Remote scheme, but it is nice to have the option available for people who want to use a classic controller or a GameCube controller. Those are all my complaints about the game. Please leave your hate comments below Nintendo fanboys. And overall, I would give Super Mario Galaxy a recommendation. It's a fun game that can be enjoyed by all ages, it's a wholesome experience, it provides a good challenge to all aspiring and experienced gamers out there. A good game for any age, that will stick with you long after your original playthrough. Alright, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching everybody, I hope you had a lovely day. I love you Catherine, and let me know what you think of the more relaxed kind of review style. I had to go back and um, like re-record lines last time and it kind of made it sound weird, like you could tell I was going back to re-record some things, while in this I just want to do it all in one take, read off of a script I wrote and just upload it, so yeah, if you don't like it, oh well, that's where it's going to be from now on. Thanks guys, see you next time.